uh, I like, I'm, I'm going to try to do this every show and have a positive story. This is kind of a, a fun story. So in, um, in South Carolina, I think this is in South Carolina, um, a, farmer, uh, a farmer on a plot of land has just planted uh, the, first, uh, the first GMO trees. These are trees that both grow faster, produce better wood for lumber in a much shorter period of time because they grow faster, and suck in more CO2 than normal trees. Um, uh, this is um, an amazing uh, product. You know, assuming it works, it's, this is kind of a, a first example in the wild of, of these trees being planted. Developed in Silicon Valley by a Silicon Valley biotech company. Uh, these are GMO trees in, uh, you know, they're being planted, um, I guess, uh, you, you know, it's a, they're planting 5,000 of these trees, the modified papalas, P-O-P-L-A-R-S, papalas, um, and, and they, they, they're keeping track of them. They come from two different lines of cloned and modified uh, trees, so for the purposes of research, they they have different names. Different each each clone gets you know series of clones gets a different name, uh, and 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 part of the research is to is to follow these. But it, 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 this is pretty amazing. Uh, the goal of the company is both to provide farmers with uh, better trees and 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 quicker ability to quicker uh, get lumber off of the tree, so a profit motive, and at the same time dramatically increase the suction of CO2 out of the atmosphere. Um, this is the kind of examples that I love of trying to find ways where we can reduce CO2 emissions and at the same time make money. Uh, reduce, uh, you know, not even reduce CO2 emissions. Uh, not reduce CO2 emissions, but just increase the amount of CO2 we suck out and taking the sucking out of the CO2 and turning it into something that we can actually make money off of in these popular trees uh, one way in which this can be done, and it's super exciting. It turns out, and I, and I don't know the exact mechanism by which this works, but it turns out that these trees made it from lab to being planted in the ground in record time. They managed to found a loophole in the law, in the regulatory environment that allowed them to go very, very quickly, um, because generally genetically modified plants take forever to get approval, for example, there's a team of scientists who has genetically engineered a blight-resistant chestnut tree. And I believe that John Allison is involved in this project. He's uh, in, in returning chestnut trees to the southeast. Chestnut trees used to be the dominant tree in the southeast. And I think John Allison is involved in this effort. Anyway, scientists have genetically engineered a blight-resistant chestnut tree. They died out, died out because of some parasite. Well, this is resistant to that parasite. Um, and it's a very similar method to these, uh, these other trees, but they are being held up by the regulators and they've been waiting for decisions in 2020, since 2020. <laughs> um, another uh, engineered apple, a bioengineered apple um, grown on a small scale in Washington State, uh, now has finally grown, uh, took several years to be approved. Uh, these poplar trees found, I don't know, some kind of uh, a, a, some kind of loophole in the regulations and manage somehow to, uh, to get approved very, very quickly. I think it's these kind of things that are super exciting. It's these kind of things that make me uh, optimistic about the future. Uh, science or in technology, applying science and, and solving human problems, which is what technology innovation uh, does, in, in, in ingenuity does, keeps chugging ahead. It keeps moving ahead. The, 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 you know, I, I think we're going to see over the next 20 years super exciting things in, in biology of plants and fruits and food and all of that. We're going to see super exciting things in human longevity and in cancer treatment and heart disease and all these things that will allow us to live longer. Um, the science is moving forward. And one could only really imagine if we didn't have all the regulatory burden, if regulators weren't holding all this up, uh, up. And of course, here's an example where the science is not just producing better trees, but also solving, or if there, it is a problem, uh, at least addressing what people believe is a problem of too much CO2. Well, okay, let's just plant more of these trees, and we solve that problem. This is related to 
Alex's uh, thing. There is a fascinating article about this, and I know many of you will resist reading it because it's where it published, but the reality is this publication publishes a lot of good stuff. Now I'm going to get a bunch of people unsubscribing, and that's the New York Times. Um, so uh, it's called Living Carbon is the name of the c company, and it was published, I think published today, um, you know, yesterday in the New York Times, uh, and it's, it, it, it lays out the environmentalists attacking this. It lays out the story about uh, one of the things they're going to have to do with this grove of trees is protect it because it's likely that some environmentalist organizations are going to come in and try to uproot the trees or burn them down or destroy them um, because they're so manical about anti-GMO. So they're actually going to have to protect these trees. And the New York Times gives a very objective, I think, um, a very objective uh, presentation of uh, the story. Um, so, uh, yeah. And, and they make the point of uh, all their hang-ups in terms of regulation. You know, they, they, they also point out, ooh, you know, GMO can be dangerous and so on. But that's okay. You can read it and you can come to your own, own conclusion. Um, they say, well, outright destruction of genetically engineered trees has dwindled thanks in part to tougher enforcement of laws against acts of eco-terrorism. The trees still prompt unease in the forestry and environmental worlds. Major organizations that certify sustainable forests ban engineered trees from forests that get their approval. Some also prohibit member companies from planting engineered trees anywhere. To date, the only country where large numbers of genetically engineered trees are known to have been planted is, guess which country, allows for massive numbers of genetically engineered trees to be planted. And this is why, this is why they might, they might, in spite of their political system, overtake us one day in terms of, you know, economic growth. And that is China. China doesn't have all these hangups, doesn't have, China doesn't have all these you know, crazy, uh, insane, uh, irrational um, uh, environmental regulations. So in China, they're building nuclear power plants, they're building hydroelectric dams like crazy, and they're planting genetically engineered trees. We should be too. Um, anyway, I thought that was a fascinating story, really, really cool, um, and I hope you did too. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.